In crime TV shows, you may remember seeing forensic investigators use computers to reconstruct the face from a skull and identify the victim. In many forensic cases or even massive disasters, when the body remains are badly damaged and no other information is available, facial reconstruction becomes a powerful tool to help identify the body, and it has been successfully applied in many cases. But is what we saw on TV real? Can the investigators already just use computers to get the face from the skeletal remains? Unfortunately, this is not possible yet. In real cases, the restoration of the skeletal remains and the reconstruction of the face still need to be processed manually by forensic specialists. This procedure could take up to several days to finish, which is very time-consuming and labor-intensive. Also, reconstructions done by different persons could be different because of their subjectivity. The issues of time, labor, and subjectivity are inhibiting investigators from solving crimes, bringing about justice, and giving the deceased the closure they deserve. These issues are ones we are trying to solve, and we are developing computer programs to do it. With support from the National Science Foundation and in collaboration with forensic anthropologists at Louisiana State University, our team is building the first digital skull restoration and facial reconstruction pipeline and developing novel computer graphics and machine learning programs to make this whole procedure more efficient and more objective. In this talk, I will show you our most recent progress in the development of this pipeline which has three main components, fragmented skull reassembly, damage restoration, and facial reconstruction. The first thing we are looking at are the bones themselves. When they come to us, the skulls are usually fragmented with part of them missing, often damaged by animal or environmental activities. So the first step is to restore these pieces back to their original geometry. Conventionally, Fragmented skulls need to be reassembled and held together with wax or other glues manually. This is again slow and dependent on the modeler's skill. So in our pipeline, we first 3D scan these fragments to get their digital models, then have computer programs reassemble them for us. But the challenge is, how do we teach computers to do the reassembly automatically? Let's first consider the reassembly problems in two-dimensional space. And this is equivalent to teaching computers to solve jigsaw puzzles. Although it's been studied in computer vision fields for more than two decades, we found that most existing algorithms only work on toy examples and couldn't even handle moderately complex puzzles. So recently, we developed a new algorithm to do the reassembly. We trained the machine to recognize textures of images so that it could identify and group together potential neighboring pieces, which often have similar or related textures. We also developed a new hierarchical model to search for the optimal composition between fragments that maximizes the mutual consistency of local alignments. In other words, it picks the correct stitching between fragments by analyzing how well they make them fit with all their neighbors from the big pictures. With this new design, our algorithms can greatly outperform existing approaches and could now solve puzzles that are four or five times more complex than those that could be handled by existing algorithms. After explaining our idea in 2D, let's see how this works with 3D items. Suppose we have a ceramic norm model and we break it into fragments then we digitize these fragmented pieces, and our program can automatically reassemble them back to the normal model again. On real skull, this digital reassembly could also be applied. This shows an example of fragmented skull that got reassembled by our program. After fragment reassembly, we should shift from this to the damaged restoration, which repairs the still missing or damaged region on the skull. So we need a program to help us guess what should be filled in this missing part. 
We have developed our restoration system by combining three effective strategies. We can repair a skull using its self-symmetry, as human skulls are generally symmetric. We can also repair the missing region by transplanting its counterpart from a template skull. We can also predict the missing part from existing regions using a statistical shape model built upon a skull database. By combining all these three effective strategies, we have developed a reliable restoration system for damaged skulls. After skull restoration, the last step is the facial reconstruction. This is where the skull meets the flesh. Performing an accurate facial reconstruction is actually challenging even for forensic specialists. This is because although the general geometry of the face can be mostly determined by the skull, certain features such as lip shape, eyebrows, and hairstyle cannot be inferred from the bones. So a realistic facial reconstruction often relies on certain artistic interpretation from the modeler. To avoid these ambiguities, in our pipeline, instead of directly reconstructing the face from the skull, we first reconstruct many faces from portrait photos. Such photos could come from a database of missing persons. Then we perform a superimposition to match the skull with each reconstructed face and see how likely this skull belongs to that person. Finally, this matching can be used to revise the reconstructed face to better match the skull. To train computers to do the facial reconstruction from a photo, we built a deep neural network and used about 50,000 pairs of 3D face scans and portrait photos and trained the feature extraction and face modeling so that the program can reconstruct the face from any new given photo. To do the superimposition, the program will check if this face corresponds to this skull, how well the tissue depth will match with the facial geometry. For example, here the green points indicate regions where tissue depth have small deviation from the standard, while the red points indicate regions where tissue depths are abnormal. The matching probability can then be calculated based on the ratio of green and red points. Now, with this program, when given a skull, we could calculate its matching probability with each face in the database and return a list of best matched faces. And on a specific reconstructed face, the program could identify, then refine the not well-matched region according to the skull to get to resynthesize a new face that better matches the skull. In terms of speed, our program, after training, can finish the reconstruction and superimposition within just a few seconds. And its accuracy and reliability will continuously improve with the collection of more and more data. We are excited. What we have developed here could potentially save forensic specialists days and weeks from their work time. And this may lead to a faster path to answers for people in the wake of disasters or tragedies. Besides their forensic applications, these technologies also open the door to more general applications. For example, instead of just reassembling jigsaw puzzles, we could train computers to reassemble shredded or ripped documents and become an unshredder for important files. Instead of just repairing damaged skulls, we could train computers to repair other things such as valuable ancient paintings or relics. And instead of just reconstructing faces from portraits, we could train computers to reconstruct any 3D scenes from our available photos to get our physical world digitized. All in all, this research is laying the foundation to make the fully computerized facial reconstruction a reality. It is also making many more computer-assisted data restorations possible in the very near future. What are we going to restore or reconstruct next? I don't know. But now, anything is possible. Thank you. <laughs>